Hi, welcome back. So about a year ago, I would say, year, year and a half, I did put up on my channel a video where I did a full face of Vive makeup, but since then they have come out with even more products. I've bought most of these products as well, so I thought it would be a good idea to do an updated full face of Vive makeup today. And I've got all the makeup out behind me on the dressing table here, and there is a lot. I seem to buy most of their new releases. There are a few that I have passed on and I will kind of talk about those during this video as well. So it will be a mostly a full face of Eve makeup. There will be a couple of items that I'll have to dip into from other brands. So for example, they haven't got a mascara, they haven't got any brow products either. So those ones won't be Vive products, but the vast majority will be. So I will share my thoughts on the products as well as I'm putting them on, talk about my favorites and my not so favorites from the brand. Okay, just zoomed you in there so you can see a little bit more clearly how the makeup looks. And then just for context, I've got a window open there, curtains open rather than another window, and then I've got a ring light above the camera. So we are working with a mixture of artificial light and natural light. So first things first, because my lips are feeling very, very dry, I definitely need to get something on my lips. The first product I'm gonna talk about from Vive is the Lip Dew. Now this is the one in the shade Pesca. I did originally, about a year ago when they first came out with it, bought the original Vive Lip Dew, and I do have a video about that one as well. I've got quite a few Vive videos on my channel. And I didn't like that Lip Dew. I didn't like the fact that it had glitter in it, and I do not like glitter in most of my makeup products. I like glitter on my eyes, and that is it. I find that if there's glitter and lip glosses, it looks quite kind of cheap. It looks like very, very young. It's like the, the first kind of makeup products that you used to kind of like try when you were a kid. So I, I don't really like having any glitter in my lip products, but I loved the actual product, the glitter aside, the product itself was really, really lovely. It was a beautiful, hydrating, thin lip gloss. So they do call it a lip oil. So it is that kind of hybrid between an oil and a gloss because you do have the gloss-like effect, but it's not sticky and it's not tacky and very heavy. So it was a real shame because I really loved that, that lip gloss. And I always said, if it didn't come without glitter in, I would repurchase it. And then fast forward to maybe a few months ago, when they came out with three more shades of the Lip Dew. They came out with Cherub, I think, which is the Lip Dew alternative to the blusher. Rosa, which is like a dusky brown pink. And then the one that I got, which is Pesca, which is the orangey peach shade. Now this contains absolutely no glitter. It is just a clear sheen. Now, I wouldn't say, finish it, applying it first, I wouldn't say it provides a lot of peachiness to my lips. However, looking at the kind of, the viewfinder here on, on my camera, it does look a bit peachy. Actually, it has given a bit of peach, peachiness to my lips. Not a lot, so if you want a real whack of peach in a lip gloss, I wouldn't sort of like rely on this, but it just gives a nice hint. But it's so hydrating, my lips feel so much better now. And I like as well that the doe foot with this, it's quite like a thick doe foot, so you can really kind of like whack it on, but it's not messy as well. So so a much better lip dew than the original. I thoroughly enjoy this one and I would repurchase this one as well because it gives just a little bit of colour to the lips, but beautiful. There we go, just brought the camera down a little bit. So my lips are nicely hydrated now, so let's get on and do some base makeup. Starting with the Skin Nova, this is the face primer. I have an issue with the pump, as you can see. <laughs> there we go, finally. Now, I've said about this a couple of times on my channel, but I'll mention it again just in case you haven't heard me say it before, but this is a fairly new product. I bought this in January, and I have used it a decent amount of time since I bought it, but not enough for the pump to be pumping away about, what, 20 times before I get any product out, so that is a bit annoying. I'm gonna try and see if I can scoop any product out. If not, I will probably end up cutting the tube and scooping out the rest of the product because it is a little bit annoying that I'm not getting product out straight away. If I was right down to the end of this product and there was hardly left in it, fair enough, but like I say, I haven't used that much of it to warrant the pump not really working that well, so that's a little bit annoying. But the product itself, I don't notice much of a difference 
when it's just on my face as it is at the moment but it is a really beautiful base for products to go on over the top it's very hydrating my foundation my concealer blends in beautifully over the top so it is a very nice hydrating face primer but I don't think that it does much as a standalone product like this so I wouldn't go out wearing just this primer I would definitely put product over the top just want to mention about how the products like physically look I think the packaging for the Vive makeup products are just so beautiful it's very expensive looking it's very chic very kind of classy looking packaging and as, as I say I've got it all out on my dressing table behind me and it all looks beautiful you can tell there's a lot of thought that's gone into how all the makeup looks so Vive don't have any foundations I do think they will come out with a foundation at some point no but they currently don't have any however Jamie Jamie Genevieve the owner of the brand Vive she came out with a little bit of like a hack to to get a foundation from some of the existing products so what you do you mix some of the Vive concealer with the skin dew which is the liquid highlighter so you mix those two together to get a nice glowy base and that's your foundation so that is what I'm going to do now I don't want too much of a glowy base so I'm gonna just go for a little bit like that I will talk about the highlighter in a bit actually when it comes to putting more highlighter on and then with the modern radiance concealer I've got mine in the shade light three gonna put some of that on my hand so that's what we're kind of working with at the moment Actually, I'm gonna take away some of that highlighter because I think I actually put too much on so just mixing the rest of that together and then I'll use my finger to whack it onto my face. I'm going to start with this much and then see how much more I want to add over the top. But the good thing about this is that you can really tailor how much of a glowy base you want. So if you just want a little bit of coverage but more of a glow, you add less concealer and more of the liquid highlighter. But if you want just a touch of glow but you, you're after more coverage, more concealer and less of the highlighter so i definitely need a lot of coverage because i've got these breakouts going out going out going on at the moment and my cheeks are a little bit red and this is blending in really lovely over the top of that primer so that primer is a really lovely product i would purchase it again i would rebuy it but i'm not sure if i would be in a massive rush to rebuy it I would like to try some other primers but it is one that I would go back to and I, I would recommend I do think it's a lovely hydrating base so like I say Vive don't currently have any foundations I do think they will come out with a foundation at some point however they would have to make sure that they're including enough shades to cover you know as big a spectrum of undertones skin tones etc etc but if it's anything like their concealer I think it will be a really really lovely product now I usually use under eye corrector but I'm not going to do that today because I want to see just how well the concealer performs on its own so I do have some redness here that still needs covering I've got the blemishes there and I will put some of this under my eyes so I have this in the shade light three and when I was placing my order for this I did find it a little bit tricky to know which shade to go for I recall they had an online tool to help you but my answer changed depending on which foundation I put in because I think at the time you were only able to put in one foundation so mine kept saying light one then light two then light three so I thought well which one so instead I just looked at the description of the concealers themselves and I'm pretty sure this one had a peach undertone so as I'm warm toned I thought this one would be the best option to go for and I think it's really nice I think it's a good shade match right whilst that sits and sort of like sets a little bit I will just quickly do my brows this isn't Vive this is the NYX clear eyebrow gel which is control freak I do think that Vive will also come out at some point with brow products I don't think they currently have any if they did that completely passed me by and then just filling in a little bit with the Kiko precision eyebrow pencil I've got this in one of the blonde shades doesn't actually say on it what shade it is but I think it's one of the, the blonde shades so it's blending this concealer out this blends really beautifully it's like a it's like a mousse texture it's got really good coverage 
And although I'm using this with a brush, this does also blend out nicely with a beauty sponge as well. I find this concealer doesn't cling to any sort of like texture either. It's a really beautiful blend. I'm very impressed with this concealer. This is one that I would definitely repurchase from the brand. And I just like to finish just by blending it out with my finger just to make sure everything is properly blended. Okay, so I'm going to set my T-zone and my under eyes with their powder, which is the Modern Perfector Light. This looks really light. I did originally think, God, that's a little bit too pale for me, but actually it is a really good shade match. This is a beautiful powder. This is excellent as well for sort of like covering any blemishes. So if I've got some spots going on, sometimes I find covering them in like foundation or concealer, they still kind of like peer through, poke through. But putting a bit of this powder over the top just tones it down a little bit. So it's very effective for that. I don't often reach for this one to go for under my eyes though. I tend to kind of stick to my loose powder from Laura Mercier, but this one does do a lovely job as well. What I'm not that keen on though is you get a lot of kickback when you put your brush into it. So just kind of be aware of that. But it is a beautiful powder. And I like with this as well, you have a hole in the back of it. That is for a refill. So once you have finished this off, you can pop out the empty pan and buy a refill for it. So that's really great in terms of reducing packaging waste. And it's nice to see that lots more sort of brands are thinking along those lines as well because if you really love the product you don't want to be buying all of the new packaging again you just want the actual pan itself so it's nice that you can keep your original packaging and just buy the pan i think this has got a lot of kickback because it is just so finely milled it's a very very light textured powder but it does have a good amount of coverage so i'm just going to cover some of this like redness on my cheeks here as well I never used to be that bothered by powders. I used to think, well, a powder's a powder. But this one has slightly kind of like changed my mind because it's so beautiful to work with. It doesn't make my makeup look heavy. And it comes with a nice mirror as well. So this has got the, the gold packaging to it. It is a little bit chunky, but beautiful packaging. Very expensive looking going for the gold. Let's do some blusher. This is, I think, my newest, one of my newest Vive products. This is the liquid blusher, the Sunset Blush Balm. They have this in three, four shades. So I picked mine up in the shade Pesca, which is a peach shade, so sort of like similar to the Lip Dew. And I have the powder version of this, which I will also put on as well. This is a lovely liquid blusher to work with. It's not like a whack of pigment, so you can apply a fair amount, but it's so beautiful in giving you like a light, sort of like sheen of cover, colour rather. Very easy to work with, blends out very, very quickly and easily. So if you are a beginner, if you are a newbie to the world of like liquid blushes, this would be one to go for. done quick easy beautiful blusher so yeah like i say this one is in the shade pesca this kind of light peach they do have rosa as well i think i think they have cherub or is it sorbet and then they also have piazza as well i've got piazza in the powder blusher that is like a dark terracotta so that's a bit more of like that sunburnt blusher very very beautiful works on my fair complexion as well so don't be put off with how dark it is Next, let's do some bronzer. This is the Bronzing Duo. It also has a couple of holes in the back as well to poke out the pans, and then you have some pans to refill it with. And this is the Bronzer Duo in the shade Light. So you have Light 1 here and Light 2. You can mix the two shades, which is usually what I do, or you can use just one and then put a bit of two slightly higher up here to get more of like a more of a defined look. So yeah, you can play about the two shades, but to be honest, I just kind of mix the two together. If I was the type of person who kind of like tans in the summer, I would probably have like light one as my autumn winter shade and then light two as my summer shade. But I don't really tend to change <laughs> colour too much. I'm kind of like this level of fairness year round. And these aren't orangey. 
at all and that's quite often a worry for light complexions is that bronzers can be very orange they aren't at all they are a beautiful shade and they are very easy to work with v powders some of the most brilliant powders that i have ever come across especially the eyeshadows i'll come on to that in a bit the powders are just so easy to work with you you can't really like mess it up they are brilliant for beginners so easy to work with so buttery so like blendable and buildable as well you can obviously make it more bronze but because i'm going to go in with a powder blusher as well and then also some highlighter products i think i'm going to leave it like this for now but yeah it's a very natural sun-kissed bronze effect so for blushes I, I do have a good choice of blushes to go for i have two here i did have three but i did declutter sorbet because sorbet is a pinky peachy coral but on me, I felt it lent a little bit more cool tone. So I did pass that one on to my boyfriend's sister, but I have kept the other two. Piazza, that's the one I mentioned a little while ago. This is, you see how dark it is. It doesn't look this dark on your face though. This is a lovely, like I say, sunburnt blusher shade. It's much more of a, if I'm not sure that I want a blusher, I go for this because this provides a bit of like natural colour on my face but it's not obvious that I'm wearing a blusher so I find this one really good for red lipstick because I never know what blusher to wear with a red lip so that's beautiful. I also have Pesca which is the powder version of the cheek blusher, beautiful light peach. This is arguably my favourite blusher that I own because it's it's so easy to wear, it works really well with my complexion, I can wear it with so many different makeup looks it's one that i dive into a lot and i do also have as well the face palette this is the dimension face palette this unfortunately was limited edition i don't think you can get this one anymore i got the shade dawn which was the lighter of the two dusk was the other one so in here you have your bronzer you have two blushes so you've got like a light peach here in comparison to pesca Pesca is just slightly more vibrant I would say this one in the face palette is a bit more kind of toned down and then the other blusher in the palette is more of a very very soft warm pink beautiful two blusher shades in here and there's also a highlighter in here as well so this face palette kind of contains everything you need for your cheek products so brilliant in terms of travel brilliant in terms of like making sure that they all kind of match each other as well and I use this face palette a lot. I love this face palette. It's so incredibly useful and handy to have. And the shades are beautiful as well. But the blusher I'm going to go for is going to be the powder Pesca version. Just so it ties in really nicely with the liquid one. So again, very easy to use. You don't get a huge whack of pigment and then you have to spend ages blending it out. It's very kind of easy to build up your level of blush that you want. And these blushes would definitely be a repurchase, especially Pesca because I do use it that bit more frequently than Piazza. But the bronzer and blusher definitely are repurchases from the brand for me. Oh, I've got a feeling this is going to be a long video. There's so many products to talk through. Okay, back to the liquid highlighter. This is the Vive Skin Dew. This is the extra large version. If you are a regular on my channel, you know that I'm not really a highlighter fan. But I wanted to try this one because I'd heard so many good things about it. I love the brand anyway. And I think a liquid highlighter is much more flattering. It's much more kind of natural than a powder one. So I don't mind trying more cream highlighters or liquid highlighters over powder highlighters and this one is beautiful i don't particularly love the packaging because it does sort of like end up squeezing out more product than you want and then you have to like hold it upright like this so more product doesn't come out so not a big fan of that and i have heard that some people have decanted the tube and put it into a pot and they find that a bit easier to work with this is a lovely colour highlighter. This is definitely my shade of highlighter. A light, warm yellow gold. 
very flattering and very easy to work with as well. I do like to use my fingers for this. I find it a lot easier to kind of control how much I apply and I find it blends in a lot nicer as well. Now I'm not sure if this would be a repurchase but I don't think that's a slant on the product itself. I think it's more of a case that I don't particularly love wearing a highlighter. But if my hand was forced, if somebody said you have to rebuy a highlighter, it would be this one. And then to go over the top, I'm going to use the highlighter from the face palette. And this is also a light gold shade. I haven't bought the individual highlighters from Vive. Those were an immediate pass for me, again, because I don't particularly like highlighters. But if they are similar to this one in this face palette and you like a highlighter, go and try them out because this one in the palette is actually really beautiful. It's very lovely to work with. It's not chunky. You don't get really like big chunky bits of glitter. It's very fine and natural. Okay, so under eyes, I have two of the eye wands. I'm going to use one as my eyeshadow base, like an eyeshadow primer. Now, she has matte eye wands and shimmer eye wands i haven't tried any of the shimmer ones so i can't really comment on those and i have only tried two colors of the matte ones i have mine in the shade <clears throat> excuse me sand and camel they are a selection of warm browns mostly warm browns i think there is an odd cool toned one in there but you have a very like pale ivory right through to a black shade as well and i think you can get them in the set these are beautiful. These are so easy, quick, that they're, they're lovely to work with. I had to go into the office yesterday, so I actually used Camel as an all over lid shade and it was very quick and easy to do. I set it with a bit of bronzer and it lasted all day. So the one that I'm gonna use is Sand. This one is just, I suppose, my eyelid shade, but slightly better. So if I want a really natural look, this is the one I go for, whereas Camel is much more of a very warm orange brown. So that one I would use as an actual eyeshadow shade, but this one I would use as a base or just to make my eyelids look like they have a bit more colour to them. So super easy to use, you literally just draw it onto your eyelid, take a fluffy brush and blend it out. Now you can wear these alone, but because my eyelids are a little bit oily, I do like to set them with a similar like eyeshadow over the top or what I'm going to do today I'm going to use other eyeshadows over the top of this but if your eyelids aren't particularly oily you can just get away with using this eyeshadow stick as it is so yeah that one has just given a touch of color to my eyelid whereas with camel it is a warm brown so this one would be more of an obvious eyeshadow color on me absolutely beautiful I, I do love this and again these would be items that I would repurchase and I am also interested to try a couple of the other shades from Vive as well and especially where I like a warm brown makeup look it is definitely my kind of vibe I am interested to try the other warm brown eyeshadow stick shades that Vive do I think I would get a lot of use out of them so in terms of palettes then Vive have come out with three eyeshadow palettes. The most recent one was the 90s palette, which is very much a cool toned grey purple eyeshadow palette. That was a real easy pass for me because I'm not really into those shades and I like to wear warm tones instead of cool tones. But if you like that kind of grungy, lived in, smoky, sexy 90s eye, that palette is for you. The palette that I'm not going to use in today's video, this is the Muse palette. This is the second one that she came out with and this is full of warm pinks and purples, mostly mattes, but you do have some shimmers in there as well. I am a bit torn on this one though because I love the shades, beautiful to work with, but pinks and purples aren't the best shades on me. So I am using this palette as part of my Pan in Every Eyeshadow palette challenge, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep hold of this one into next year it's not a slant on the product at all beautiful quality easy to use beautiful shades but they're just not my kind of shades pinks and purples so the palette that I'm going to use instead is the first eyeshadow palette that she came out with the essentials palette definitely my kind of palette warm browns golds an everyday neutral 
brown eyeshadow look to go for with this palette. I absolutely love it. So, but this is the palette I'm going to use in today's video. I have it pan in the, in the shade So Shy. These pans are huge. Let me just compare it to Modern Renaissance from ABH and you can see the size difference in pans amazing these are so big so yeah i'm very impressed that i've actually managed to hit pan in one of the shades so i'm going to start off with my usual crease shade this is the shade buff now these are these are so easy to work with if you are not particularly good at working with eyeshadow powders or if you're a beginner this palette although it might sound a little bit pricey to start with I would highly recommend getting this palette because the powders are just so easy to work with. I'm not the best at doing eyeshadow which is why I'm not really an eyeshadow person but this palette just makes it so easy. Like with the powder bronzer and blusher the powders are just so easy to work with. They're very buttery, very easy to build up pigment they blend really well as well and I find that my makeup always looks really nice when I wear Vive makeup. So hopefully it will look nice when I've finished filming this video, it would be awkward if it doesn't. Right, I'm going to use the shimmers. I think I'm going to use Thea, which is this one here. Now from memory, I haven't used the shimmers in, in a while so I can't really remember the best way to work with them. But the shimmers in this palette aren't the best and that's my only critique with this eyeshadow palette is that the shimmers are a bit tricky to work with. I think they work okay if you use like a wet brush. So where I've just put a bit of setting spray on this brush, I think this is okay. But the shimmers in the Muse palette, so the pink and purple one, are better than the shimmers in this one. So. I think they did kind of learn from the critique of the shimmers in this palette and they changed it up for the Muse one, so that is good. But Thea is this very beautiful, like, dark gold. It is a little bit grungy. So, yeah, a little bit kind of grungy. I'm going to put a bit of carrot, so the lighter one, more in that kind of inner third, just to lighten that up a little bit. Okay, going to darken up the um, crease a little bit with a bit of the shade Delicious and I'm going to use a slightly smaller blending brush. Right, I'm just going to tidy up around the edges with a bit of So Shy which is this matte very pale ivory shade. Blend this up around the edges under the brow bone just to sort of like tidy it up a little bit. And then just put in some of that highlighter in the face palette just in my inner corner and under the brow bone. I find it's easier to use this than one of the shimmer shades in the eyeshadow palette because I then have to wet my brush again. But that worked fine actually, that was a lot easier than I remember using the, the shimmers. But yeah, just do remember you, you need a wet brush, you can't just go in with a dry brush because you won't really get much in terms of the pigment. It will be very, very sheer. So Vive do have a black liquid liner, but because I like brown, I'm just going to use my Ico Coco Edit. I do wonder if they will come out with a brown liquid liner though. But that is another product, one of the few products from Vive that I have not tried the liquid liner. I've also not tried the false lashes as well. I'm not a false lash person at all. I just don't get on with them, so can't comment on what they're like either. I'm gonna set my face with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Vive also don't yet currently have a mascara i do think this is something that they will also come out with so the gaps at the moment where they haven't got any products so foundation eyebrow mascara pencil eyeliners as well i think that these gaps will be filled in the next sort of few years because they have pretty much 
everything else in terms of the makeup that you can use for a full face. So they've got primer, concealer, powder, blusher, bronzer, highlighter, eyes, as in eyeshadow sticks, eyeshadow palettes. They have a liquid liner. They've got false lashes. They've got lip gloss, lip liner, <laughs> lipstick. So they have a pretty big selection of products already. So I'm sure behind the scenes that they are currently working on those gaps so that will be exciting and in terms of new products they did recently come out with the quad eyeshadows i think they've got four of them now these are another easy pass for me because i have loads of eyeshadows at the moment i definitely don't need to be adding more into my collection but if i didn't have any and i wanted to try some i would pick up the matte brown one because those would probably be the only like four eyeshadow shades that I would ever need and if the quality is anything like the quality of the big eyeshadow palette so like Muse and Essentials you're going to get an excellent quality product so yeah if you haven't got any eyeshadows from Vive and you are interested in trying some maybe get yourself if you can do so one of the quads all right, we are very nearly there. If you're still watching, well done. So just gonna finish up on the lips. So I do currently have a little bit of the Pesca Vive lip juice still on my lips, but I am gonna put on a lip liner and a lipstick. And I originally had quite a few lip liners and lipsticks from Vive, but sadly I have decluttered quite a few of them over sort of like recent months. I did get lipsticks and lip liners that are suitable for warm skin tones because they do make it easy on their like Instagram stories to figure out which ones are warm and which ones are cool toned. So I originally had I think three of the brown lip liners. I currently only have one. I did have Bark and Rumour I think but they were far far too dark on me. Very dark colours of lip liners. I've kept Velvet Sands which is much more of a lighter warm orangey brown lip liner shade so I do really like the colour of this one and then at some point when they came out with all of their like pink lipsticks I bought um I think it was Stupid Cupid and Bewitched. Bewitched was purple. <laughs> Straight up purple shade on me not flattering in the slightest and then Stupid Cupid was a lovely shade but pinks on my colouring are very difficult to, to pull off so I did declutter those two as well so I had about five or six currently down to one. I really like the shade of this one. Suits me, it's my kind of like everyday nude shade, but I find the texture once it's on my lips to be a bit sticky, so I don't enjoy that. So because of that, I wouldn't repurchase these. But to apply them, they're beautiful. They're very creamy, so they glide on. There's no tugging or dragging on your lips. Very pigmented as well, but if only it didn't have that kind of like sticky texture afterwards, then I would definitely repurchase this shade. And then for lipsticks, a, a similar kind of thing. I did have quite a few. I think I had maybe about five or six. Again, I had two pinks when they came out with the pink shades. The pink lipsticks corresponded to the lip liners I bought. I think they were in the shades Promise and Cherub's Kiss. Promise, again, straight up purple on me, not flattering in the slightest. And then Cherub's Kiss was a cool tone pink. So cool tone pinks, not the best on my warm complexion. And then with the browns, I have two of them. I did declutter one, which was, come on and hope, power suit, treasure. I decluttered treasure because that was far, far too light. It looked like I was wearing concealer as lipstick. So I got rid of that one. And the two I currently have, I have coming and hoped, which is my least favorite of the two. This one swatches lovely on the hand, but on my lips, I need something with a bit more earthiness, a bit more richness behind it. So I do like to mix this in with the next shade, which is Power Suit. This one is my favourite. This one is like a burnt orange. So beautiful. So out of all the lipstick shades that I've tried, I would repurchase Power Suit. But I do need to wear these with a bit of hydration. These are called Modern Matte Lipsticks. So they are matte in texture and I do find them a bit drying. So hopefully because I've got a bit of lip dew currently on my lips it will feel a bit better over the top but on its own I do find it a bit drying. 
So unfortunately, the lip products from Vive aren't my favourite. They're not ones that I would hugely recommend. Great, like, choice of shades though. I, I do I do like that, that they have a lot of different shades to go for. So you can have your pink and your version of like a brown nude. But the texture, not my favourite. So I'm going to start off lining my lips with Velvet. Velve? No, Vive Velvet Sands Lip Liner. And then let's use my favourite lipstick from Vive, Power Suit. So a very warm orangey brown, my kind of shade, love this shade. I, t I tend to wear this one more in like the autumnal months because it's very much that kind of like pumpkin spiced lip colour. But on somebody with my kind of complexion, if you are very warm, this would be a beautiful year round shade. But if you are cool toned, I would probably give this lipstick shade a miss. So this is my full face of Vive makeup. So please let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on the brand and what products do you love from them? What products are you maybe gonna give a miss? If there are any that I haven't tried and you think I should try, please do let me know down below as well. Overall, I, I love this brand, I really do. I think it's arguably my favorite brand. And I, I say that because I've tried so much from the brand that like I've said in this video, there are only a few items that I haven't tried. So I feel like I've got good experience of the brand. I've tried enough different products from the brand to get a good kind of idea as to what the brand is like, how it performs, things like that. So my favorites from the brand, if I were to pick a top three, would be the liquid blusher, the sunset blush balm, so incredibly easy to use, very beautiful shade, easy to blend out, very quick as well, a lovely natural flush of colour on the cheeks. Next would be the eyeshadow palette, in particular the Essential eyeshadow palette. I don't think the shimmers are great though, the shimmers do definitely need to be used with either like a glitter primer underneath or a wet brush, so do bear that in mind, but the mattes, beautiful, love using the mattes in particular from this eyeshadow palette. And then as well, unfortunately, because this one is limited edition and you can't get it anymore, the face palette. Just so convenient to have your blusher, bronzer and highlighter in one palette. They all work well together. And the powders from Vive are honestly some of the best powders I have ever tried because they're so easy to blend, buttery, great formulation to work with. And if you are not particularly good at makeup, if you're not particularly good at sort of using eyeshadow powders or anything, the powders are just, they're so user friendly, they're so beginner friendly as well. I really don't feel like you can mess up using the Vive powders. So yeah, I'd probably say these three would be my favorites. And I wouldn't really say that there are any misses. There are some products that I'm not as keen on as others. So for example, the formulation, the texture of the lip liners and the lipsticks, but I think it is a great brand to try products from. So if you have never tried anything from the brand and you really want to, I honestly think that no matter what you pick, you are gonna get a really good product. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you are thinking about doing so, it really would be lovely if you would hit the subscribe button. Have a lovely rest of your day, everybody, and I'll see you again very, very soon for my next one.